This is my uh, Into Fun built arcade extensions cabinet um, and build and all that good stuff. Um, I've had a whole bunch of emails in the past uh, few weeks asking me um, if I could explain a little bit more about this and what goes into this and its build quality and such. So, first of all, I'm about 99% certain that this is just an extensions arcade. Okay, with that being said, this is made out of IKEA furniture quality material. You can see down here where I've uh, lifted this with a dolly in the back and straight up crack this and it's made out of particle board. The uh, system and everything is great, don't get me wrong, it works, but people are asking about build quality. And you can see I've got um, the LED color strip lights that work on the bottom but not on the sides. Um, that's my fault. I uh, <clears throat> um, loaded it in the my vehicle incorrectly and uh, uh, broke the connections. I really need to go back and fix that. Um, <clears throat> this has got a uh, custom art package that it came with that you can see. Um, this has got a plexiglass bezel. This is quite literally a um, uh, Insignia TV from Best Buy that came in this uh, that works just fine. And you've got a uh, medium spec computer in here. These all have a little keyboard, mouse, Got the wireless Xbox 360 controller set up and uh, volume control, which you really would have an external volume control like this uh, to make things easier. Now, as far as the quality of the controls, um, they're okay. Um, you know, I've obviously got my um, Street Fighter 2 button layout. Uh, there's a switch here to turn these lights on and off, and then there's a switch here to toggle between a four-way joystick and an eight-way joystick here. <clears throat> and then you have the spinner. Um, they make a couple of different extensions, arcade uh, cabinet things, or uh, panel layouts. Um, if it was me and I was going to buy one for myself, I'd probably get the four-player one if I had enough people in the family. The spinner games are cool, but, I mean, how many spinner games are there, really? Um, as far as... Um, the quality of this, and I need to show you this. This is quite literally IKEA furniture, the way it's made. The, it's got the Allen wrench and the Allen wrench screw um, things that go in here. So I had to take this apart earlier, and I'll show you what this looks like underneath. You can see this is just a. Uh, you've got wood pegs here that these uh, go into. This was falling apart. I had to glue this back in. Actually, I'll go grab a screwdriver and show you what that looks like underneath. So, this control panel here, um, I want to say they sell these by themselves for about $500. Um, I don't know if I'd buy one of these or not. I mean, they work in their plug and play, but when you open this up underneath, <clears throat> first of all, once again, this is the absolute lowest quality wood that you could possibly put into something like this. Let's see. I'll show you the pros and cons of this um, versus a couple other things. Let's see. All right, here we go. So you can see it's just, you know, um, Regular buttons, uh, four-way controller, eight-way controller, uh, fancy trackball. But if you look at this, I'll show you in here in a second too. This little guy right here um, is what everything's plugged into, and that looks like a about a twenty-dollar part if I had to guess, and that just hooks via USB down into a computer underneath. So you got it. Com computer, uh, mid-range computer, and they're running this whole thing. Um, 
So I've had some issues with the buttons not registering and working correctly. And basically open this up, open up the back, unplug and plug back in all the connections, put it back together, hope it works. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong, but I'm about ready to start replacing things. So when you look at this and you look at the parts, if you were handy, um, and you know, you look at this, like the, the drill job on here, it's okay, but it, it seems, um, seems like there should be, this doesn't look like $500 to me if you were just buying, uh, this on its own. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how much these individual parts cost. I'm guessing there's maybe a hundred to $150 in parts in here tops, um, plus some plywood and some, uh, skills putting it together and taking it apart. Let me put this back together. Um, like I said, to the best of my knowledge, this is a uh, uh, built, basically a built extensions kit um, that's got uh, the software, the computer, everything uh, already put together. Um, and it is a nice package and it does look nice. Um, I personally was in the process of getting ready to build my own main setup. <clears throat> I had gotten a Golden T 2005 complete. Um, you can check Facebook, you can get them for uh, $400 to $800, depending on what you look, uh, how you look with the monitor uh, and everything already included. Um, you still have to hook up a computer and uh, do a whole bunch of work. It'll probably take you uh, 10 or 20 hours to figure out what you were doing. So that's what really what you're saving yourself with, with something like this. But the build quality on that was so much better. It wasn't particle board. So let me put this back together and tell you a little bit more about this system. This system has got an eight terabyte hard drive on it with um, something like 60,000 games. Um, literally every single stinking arcade game made before about 2005 is on this. And then there's all sorts of uh, gaming systems that are included on here too. Not just, you know, <clears throat> like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, but, you know, all sorts of random old <clears throat> Amistad and uh, Texas Instruments, uh, Apple II, DOS, pretty much anything you can ever imagine. So, this is running on a hyperspin front end here, and when you turn this computer on, it literally boots in the window. So if you're worried about being able to figure this stuff out, um, it's not too crazy. So, um, this menu system here, I've got it here. The buttons don't always want to work. There we go. So, I've got different systems that I can pull up. Okay, so here at the beginning, I've got MAME, MAME four-player games, MAME the good clones, and MAME for kids. So I'm just going to go into MAME, which is multiple arcade machine emulator, and just give you an idea of how much stuff is on here. So <clears throat> let's just go up to B. So I'm going to go through here, 1942, 720, uh, Action Fighters, Afterburner, Afterburner 2, Airwolf, Aladdin, Alien Star, Aliens vs. Predator, Alpine Racer, Alpine Racer 2. Um, I'm, in, I'm up to 8P here, okay? I want to see here, Area 51, all the Arknoids, A, Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, Astro Wars, um, Attacks, Avengers. Uh, okay, here we are up to B. So that... There's probably a hundred different games that are arcade games that just begin with the letter A, right? So, if I wanted to play a game, um, almost all of these work. Uh, let's go back and do something that most people would be familiar with. Uh, Afterburner. Press the button. Loads up. I've got the sound turned off to make things easier, but here we go, Afterburner 2. Coin up, push the start button, here we go. So, a random game, let's, uh, let's see here, we'll even turn the sound off. So if you want your nostalgia, here we go. 
There's afterburner too, which I'm absolutely terrible at. Now, come on. Now, this is one of my issues with this, is the, the buttons on here don't want to work 100% of the time. I don't know if it's the iPad controller that's on here. Uh, that's an issue with the uh, equipment here itself, with this control panel somewhere. So I'm going to escape out of that. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working now. But that's my main complaint about this machine, is the quality of this button, of this control layout. Exit system. So... You've got your main machines on here, right? And those are the arcade games, but check this out. There is an absolutely, and here we go. Now this controller here isn't working great right now. So I'm just gonna use, uh, great. That's not working at all. Let me exit out of this. Uh, task manager, hyperspin. So, a lot of my complaints about this machine is the, like I said, the buttons aren't always working and I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong with it. Okay, now up and down works. And it's like I have to restart it a couple of times a day if I'm sitting here and using it. But I was talking about main, right? So here's all this stuff and, you know, here's all the four player games. Um, you know, on this outer wheel, you've got things broken down into different um, groups, but this is only scratching the surface of what's actually here. Because, you know, I start scrolling through this, and um, it's not just the arcade games, but all the old gaming systems. So here we go uh, with Nintendo. Here's Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo CD, Super Nintendo Hack, Super Famicom, Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Entertainment Hack, the the Family Computer Translated, Family Disc, BSX, Bandai Sumatai, Super Game Boy, WiiWare, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo 64. Now, some of the things won't work properly, like the Wii Motion Controller games aren't going to work with this. But there's, you know, here we go. Sega Dreamcast, you know, Sega, play, all the way up to, you know, here, PlayStation 2. And it's not just, um, hey, here's some PlayStation 2 games. It's, here's every single PlayStation 2 game that was ever made, right? And just scrolling through this, like if you're trying to pick out and find a specific game, it is almost overwhelming, because for a lot of these systems, there's thousands. So, um, you know, the previews on these are built in, and they work, you know, really nice the way this is set up. So let's just prove a point. Uh, what was it I was playing the other day? Um... Oh yeah, I wanted to play Final Fantasy XII, all right? So here's Final Fantasy XII. And it'll boot up and work pretty much perfectly. Um, it's got a stupid amount of systems on here too. And like it's got old MS-DOS games and old um, Atari games built into it. Um, so if I want to, um, I can go back and search for, uh, oh, I don't know why that escape button's not working now. Alright, let me escape out of this. There's a cool, um, here we go, Game Boy, Capcom, like, if, if you can imagine an arcade game or a video game that you've played in the past, it's... It's on here. Um, you know, here's all the old Microsoft Windows and Windows 95 games built here in MS DOS. But let's go in and search. All right, hyperspin search. I can't remember how to do this. So, uh, like uh, an old game that I used to like to play. Um, I used to like to play. Uh, what was one I ran on here? Oh, um, Beavis and Butthead's Virtual Stupidity, which was a computer game from like 1995. Let's see. If, come on. I can remember how to input here. Uh, it's not going to work. Let me just type it in. Beavis. Let's see what comes up. So there is a search functionality between it. 
It's like, okay, so here we go. There's a Game Boy game, a Super Nintendo game, and a Sega Genesis game, and something on Scrum DM. Let's see, did I do that right? Is it gonna load? Come on, load for me. There we go. So here we have a random 25-year-old boss game wait. that I remember uh, playing as a kid. Just wait, something cool is gonna happen. It's here and it works, and I got my mouse and keyboard here. Beavis and Butthead are not. This is an old point and game, point and click game like King's Quest. I can navigate around here with them and do whatever it was I would have been able to do on a regular computer back in the day. Hey Beavis, maybe there's like a body in there. Now, my my major negatives on this, like I said, is the quality of the controls on this machine. Um, I still got to mess with it. Um, another thing is just picking out and finding some things can be overwhelming. Because like I said, there's 60,000 games on this. I did the math. I could play three games a day for the rest of my life and never run out of stuff to play. The other thing, issue that's on here is this was built as an all-in-one with an 8-terabyte hard drive that somebody else set up. And this may seem like a silly problem, but it's got all sorts of different random old Japanese pornographic games on it. So I can't let my kids come in here and play and scroll through it because just occasionally, no matter how many I find, I keep finding more weird, old, fetish porn games on here that I can't, uh, well, I can delete them, but every time I get rid of one, another one pops up. Um, and that's a concern if, you know, you got family and whatnot. But, you know, if you wanted to just, you know, here we go, sit here and, uh, set up something different for your kids every day. I mean, you know, here's, here's X-Men. It's just, uh, like I said, the controls are a little bit finicky. Yeah, here's the full uh, arcade experience on this. But the games are all there, um, which is really amazing. Um, I can compare this against two other things. Um, if you don't want to build a full setup, if you just want to mess around with it and see if you'd really like to get into this and enjoy it, um, you know, you can download all the torrents and the ROMs and stuff online. Um, I have found that if you go to Etsy, um, you can find um, hard drives that are already full, like an 8 terabyte hard drive that's got pretty much all the same stuff on it. I was in the process of configuring that and trying to get one set in my uh, old golden tea cabinet before uh, I ended up with this one. Um, and it's fantastic, you know, you can sit there and mess around with a uh, Xbox 360 controller, which these are hooked up here too, if you ever wanted to, you know, have an older, old-fashioned experience there. Um, if you're on a budget, the absolute best bang for your buck for something like this that uh, will give you most of the same experience would be a, uh, a Pi Cave. When I see a Pi Cave, they make uh, um, emulators that will run on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I bought a arcade one-up um, conversion that somebody had done off of Facebook that had, you know, uh, 40,000 games or something like that. But it was uh, up to like 1995, so it didn't run the 3D games like this thing will run. Um, what this does that a Pi won't do is anything 3D. Like the Scotland Dark Legacy is a great mindless fighting game, right? This wouldn't run on a Pi. But that Pi cave that I had um, had all the old arcade games, um, everything up to uh, Super Nintendo. Pretty much any arcade game that was ever made in 2D it was about this tall. It was a smaller form factor. Um, but I want to say I think I paid $700 on Facebook for it. And it was a little bit easier to use, and it didn't have all the random crap that I'm having difficulty getting rid of on here. But um, for the quick review on this, um, as far as the actual cabinet, um, the cabinet is basically IKEA furniture. It's as cheap as you could possibly build it. Um, the controls um, I have struggled with and fought with constantly. Being able to play the name and um, pretty much any old random arcade game is absolutely awesome and it's a cool piece of furniture that stands up 
in the room. But if you're looking for a nice piece of furniture and you have time, go buy an old arcade cabinet and gut it and change it out. I'd recommend the, um, the Golden Tees. The Golden Tee stuff is built like a tank. It comes with a trackball. Um, you would just add your controls. Um, and if you're remote in the candy, um, or handier than me at least, um, it, it shouldn't be too terrible. But once again, there you go. People have asked, um, I've answered.